So Sprint's had their time to shine in the spotlight, and now it's AT&T's turn. What's going on, guys? I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com, and the Epic 4G Touch, or Galaxy S2 Epic 4G Touch, has been out for a couple of weeks, but AT&T users, get ready, because the Galaxy S2 is coming to you. It's going to be available starting Sunday, October 2nd, for $199.99. So finally, a subsidized price. You don't have to import it overseas, or from overseas, rather, with that nice $700 price tag. You're getting the sucker for $200. Now, the question is, yeah, it has that dual-core 1.2 gigahertz Exynos processor. It looks just like the international version with a 4.3-inch Super AMOLED Plus display, but is this a device to get, or should you go with something like one of AT&T's LTE devices in a couple of months when those come out? We're going to try and figure that out in the full review, but first, special thanks to my boys at Best Buy Mobile, because they're always so good about hooking us up with phones for use in our One Paul Bandit game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile, whether it's to get an AT&T, a Verizon, a Sprint, or a T-Mobile phone, they're going to hook you up. They're going to make sure not only you're walking out working, but that you get a phone. They're not biased. They're going to help you figure out what's best for you, and that's pretty cool, I think. At Best Buy Mobile, they'll help you get all that set up. Enough of that. Let's get into it. The review, Samsung Galaxy S2 on AT&T. Is this the one to have? Or should you wait for one of the LTE devices? We'll find out starting right now. So Sprint's had theirs for a couple of weeks, and now the AT&T version is finally on its way. Here's AT&T's build of the Samsung Galaxy S2. We saw this at the end of August at Samsung Special Event, and it's coming to the nation's second largest carrier on October 2nd. So this coming Sunday for $199.99 after rebate with a new two-year agreement, yada, 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 all that jazz. But it is, you know, a lot more like the international version. You look at this versus the Epic Touch. The Epic Touch is a little bit bigger. The design's a little bit different. You see some changes to the camera. You see the hump is a little bit different. Very similar here to the international Galaxy S2. You can see even the way it looks design-wise. Uh, it has the same 4.3-inch display, packing all the same specs. And then the camera on the back, the way it's laid out, looks very similar as well. So very, very similar here. So it's going to be one of those things, if you're debating between the two carriers, it's going to be, you know, do you like the international version and the way it looks a little bit better, or do you want the bigger display and the bigger battery that come with the Epic 4G Touch? But here it is, just to recap on the specs, dual-core 1.2 gigahertz Exynos processor. So the Epic Touch and this one have the Exynos processor. The uh, T-Mobile version will be getting a Snapdragon processor, a 1.5 uh, gigahertz Snapdragon processor. But anyway... Back to this, 1.2 gigahertz dual core processor, 4.3 inch Super AMOLED Plus display. Now interestingly enough, it has the same pixel count as the uh, Epic Touch. So when you look at this and you look at the Epic Touch, they're both very vibrant, very colorful, but you do see that the screen's a little bit more clear on the, uh, the Galaxy S2 on AT&T than it is on the Epic 4G Touch on Sprint. So better looking display, it's smaller, but still the colors are a little bit more, just ever so slightly more rich, and uh, they look a little bit better. But Android 2.3.4, with Samsung's TouchWiz version 2, uh, 4.0, rather. So you can see completely new build of TouchWiz here. It's not what you see on the Droid Charge, not what you see on the Infuse 4G. It is the new build. And it has an 8-megapixel camera on the back that's capable of shooting video at 1080p. Now, battery is a little bit smaller. It's 1,650 milliamp hours, and it's got the typical Samsung look and feel here. The only exception to this one versus the international one is that it has capacitive buttons down here at the bottom instead of that physical home button and the two capacitive ones on either side. So you see the AT&T logo, obviously, you have your front-facing camera up here. But then down here, you have your uh, menu, home, back, and search buttons in place of that physical button. So a little bit of a different design change there. Power button over here on the right side, volume rocker on the left. I know it's kind of hard to see. The colors kind of blend in. Volume rocker on the left, micro USB charging port down here on the bottom, and then 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the top. But TouchWiz 4.0, I want to dive right in and talk about that because it's a huge difference over TouchWiz 3.0. You know, if you use the Droid Charge, you use the, uh, the Infuse 4G. I always found the TouchWiz 3.0, and this was combined with the processor, but it was very buggy or very kind of slow and laggy and just clunky, for lack of a better phrase. Totally revised here. This device is incredibly fast, just like the, uh, the international version. I mean, this thing flies. You can see there's no lag whatsoever in anything. I mean, it moves and it moves quickly, and that's one thing that's a big pet peeve for me about Android. Android, in a lot of cases, is very erratic, kind of inconsistent, and there's nothing I can't stand more on a mobile device than inconsistency. When I, you know, It takes me two seconds to open up YP Mobile, and then I click it again, and it takes me four seconds. It's just very irritating to me. Always been very much a, uh, a frustration. Not the case with this one. Very fast, no lag whatsoever. And... Uh, Come out of this so you can see Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, flight mode, screen resolution or screen rotation rather, which is turned on so we can click into landscape. You've got your shortcuts all up here. AT&T, no notifications, and what you saw there with the uh, the CTIA invite and then the Twitter stuff. That's what the notifications look like. You got your date up here. Now, interestingly enough, you know AT&T for whatever reason has opted on a lot of their Android devices to keep AT&T up there in that left-hand corner. You don't see it on this one. It is a kind of typical Android layout here with AT&T network ID in its normal spot. But 
dock down here at the bottom, you can see phone messaging, web and applications. And let's go through real quick and just look and see what comes pre-installed. All share, Amazon Kindle, you got your AT&T stuff, code scanner, family map, navigator, Google Books, featured apps, and then you got over here Keys or Kai's Air, I can never pronounce it properly. Uh, Media Hub, which is Samsung's place to get, you know, rip movies and uh, TV shows, things like that. Live TV, my AT&T, uh, messages I actually downloaded, so it does not come out of the box. You quick Light, Social Hub, you get Samsung's Task Manager, and then over here you get Words with Friends for free, and then you get YP Mobile. Now the cool thing about it, not only can you sideload applications, you know AT&T has historically been pretty bad about this, but they're getting a lot better, and not only can you sideload applications now, but you can also remove the AT&T bloatware. So if you want to come in here and you don't want Family Map, you can uninstall it and be done with it. So AT&T's finally kind of listened to their Android consumers. They uh, are ready to go and uh, these applications can be uninstalled. So that's a pretty nice feature. It's nice to finally see that, especially on high-end devices. You know, it's a high-end device. You pay quite a bit of money for it. You're going to want to customize it how you see fit and you can do that. But again, very, very fast here and you can see a lot of the TouchWiz icons. Now the menu system has been completely revamped. When I go to click on the screen, for example, you're going to see instead of bringing up that ugly look that it does on Android, and I'm just going to bring the Droid Bionic in briefly just so you can see what I mean. Instead of bringing this in with this kind of custom widget shortcuts, folders, wallpapers, you know, it looks like a typical Android layout, it brings up this nice thing at the bottom where I can click on widgets and instead of bringing up a menu, it allows me to scroll from left to right. And you'll just notice how smooth everything is and I can continue up here and scroll between the seven home screens. So very functional, just I can't get over how much of a huge revision it is because they've really went back to the ground with this one and redesigned it. But you've got a lot of different widgets, Samsung and Android stock widgets out of the box. You get AccuWeather, out of the box, AP Mobile, Battery Life one I downloaded, but Bookmark, Buddies Now, several calendar options, Agenda Today, bunch of clocks, digital clocks, uh, typical Facebook, Android Market stuff, News and Weather's in there as well, and then you've got Traffic, Program Monitor, Power Settings, and I can show you some of these that are already on the display. That's one, that's the clock, the digital clock, and then of course you have your weather widget here as well. So AccuWeather widget pre-installed, and again, you know, clean, they look good, and my favorite thing about it is in TouchWiz 4.0, you can customize the size of most of the Samsung widgets. So if you're in an area like this where you've got you know, a lot of space left, or a little bit of space rather, I could bring over something like this, bring over the power widget here so we can put it right there. And then I can say, well, I don't have much room for another widget. Well, I've got this one, and hopefully it'll fit. It looks like it might be a little bit too long. Let's see if it will. Yep, there it goes. So you see what I mean where I can customize that widget, and if I wanted to bring it down, let's try bringing it um, over like that, then I have space for another widget. So just the option to do that is very, very nice. It's something I've always enjoyed for Motorola's custom user interface, and you can do that in uh, AT&T's version of the, or excuse me, TouchWiz 4.0 on the Galaxy S2 devices. So huge improvement there, but let's jump right into messaging. You'll notice that if you're really paying attention between the Epic 4G Touch and this one, you'll notice some minor differences outside of the design. One of those really tiny differences is how the messaging icon is a little bit different. Now, if you watch my review of the international one, one thing I always enjoyed, you can go in here to settings and you can change the font size, but on the international one, you can also change the skin that the text messages come in. If you remember, there were, I think, five or six, no, there were five, on the international version where you could scroll through and kind of select different colors and select the way the text messaging looked. We don't get that here. You only get, and we'll go into old man, Baker, just for example, and we'll say the quick round fox, uh, quick brown fox is ready for dinner. Quick brown fox is pretty lazy lately. He's always ready for dinner and tired, but you got this 4.3 inch display, so it's pretty decent. You know, if you want to type in landscape mode, you can if you have big thumbs, but it works pretty uh, relatively well in portrait mode as well. Now, one thing I really like about this one, it comes with three keyboards, whereas most of the Samsung devices only come with two. It comes with a gingerbread keyboard, which is the one I'm using, the stock Android keypad. It comes with a Samsung keypad, which I don't care for, but you may like it. And it comes with swipe. And then, of course, you can pre-install several different ones out of the Android market. So, you know, it's got swipe. It's got Samsung's keypad. I don't care for the auto-correct functionality on Samsung's. I've always thought it's very inaccurate. And I've always enjoyed, you know, for the most part, the Android keyboard out of those uh, three options. So you do get it pre-installed on this one, which is a nice touch. But I'm going to go ahead and send this so you see what I mean here. On the old one, you could customize these colors and do kind of a different background color. We can't do that on this one. It's the only thing you get is uh, this blue, and then when somebody responds, it pops up in kind of a white text messaging box. So customization options are a little bit limited there. Now, that said, you should be able to go into the settings and change the font. I'm going to go see. Let's see here. Um... Is it display, if I remember right, screen display? Let's see, no, that's not right. 
There's an option in here somewhere, if I remember right, where you can go in and change the font uh, and change the actual font and download some different fonts. But I'll see if I can uh, see if I can find that during the break. But get an idea of what the settings menu looks like. But again, I can't get over how fluid this device is.